life. I know who I am before God, not by my own righteousness, but by the righteousness of Christ. And instead of being like the orphan who's always trying, please come, please come, please come, God. You see what I'm saying? So I believe this. Identity opens up the earth for this reason. The earth is groaning for the revealing of the sons of God because when the sons are revealed, when sons and daughters, when the true people of God are revealed, the earth begins to be redeemed. And so what happens is we, we have to understand that Jesus has done his part and now we co-labor with him and do our part. I want you to know the heavens are open, but the earth is what is shut. So I think I'm not against singing songs about like, come Lord. Yeah, I'm not against singing open the floodgates of heaven. I love that song. And, you know, I, I'm going to sing that because it's a cool song, you know. But let's just understand this, guys, that we do not need to pray and, and contend that the heavens would be open because I'm telling you, Jesus on the cross and the blood of Christ opened up the heavens. That's why in Revelation, am I going too fast? Come on. Put your ears on. Shut up. See, Jesus on the cross, right? He opens up the heavens because in the book of Revelation, John says, Behold, and I look into the heavens and see a door wide open. I want you to know the heavens have been opened, but the reason we don't have heaven's rain and heaven's water coming is because the earth is shut. Understand this. The heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he's given to the sons of men. He has authority and he's taken authority in the heavens to open it up. But he's given earth to us so that we can open up the earth. That's why when we truly start to become sons, the earth begins to be redeemed and opens up heaven's reign to come in. See what I'm saying? So, so that's where we're going to go tonight. Because there's something about identity that unlocks there's something about identity. As a matter of fact, there's a difference between someone who praises, prays, and worships as an orphan than someone who prays, worships, and praises God as a son. There's a different, there's a different type of praise. You know what I mean? There's a, there's like, there's a different type of praise. You ain't listening to me because I have a coat on. I should have came up here with my hair all gangly. I should have worn my shorts and my toms, and then you'd have said. But you think I'm a, I'm a slick preacher because I, I was walking out the door and I didn't want to wear coats. So I put this on. My wife said I looked good and that was enough for me. All right. My wife looks good. I, baby, stand up. Hey, she's glowing right now. We have number two on the way. My wife is amazing. We just did six weeks in four different nations. Moving every three, four days, just traveling around the world with a toddler, and she's pregnant, okay? And we're ministering, and she still finds time to, to pray and encourage me and minister to people. She's an absolute, she's just, she's absolutely amazing. Go to 2 Corinthians, all right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just drop this on you guys. Man, I love the Word of God. I love the Word of God. It's so good. Identity opens up the earth. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Do you know what happens when we begin to like, do you know like worship is more fun when you realize who you are? I mean, really like worship is, prayer is way more enjoyable when you know who you are. It's way less enjoyable. It's why you're bored and yawning during worship. It's why you think it's crazy that when people say, how could you worship for 24 hours straight? Or how could you worship, you know, for an hour, two hours? It's only boring to you because you don't know who you really are. And you don't know the place you have before the Father. That's why. It's because if our identity can be unlocked, the simplicity of our identity can be unlocked. God, I just believe that God, we'd be able to tap into the depths of God and release heaven on earth. Now read this. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 2. This is Paul speaking to the Corinthian church. All right. He says this. For I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy. For I betrothed. You know what godly jealousy is? Godly jealousy is being selfish for something for unselfish reasons. So godly jealousy means he's jealous for you. He's selfish for your life for unselfish purposes. 
I mean, that, that's what godly jealousy is. He says, I want all of you. I yearn to have every part of you so that you can be blessed, so that you can move in the fullness of your destiny. Paul, as a father, speaking to the church, he says, I'm jealous for you with a godly jealousy. For I betrothed you to one husband, so that to Christ I might present you as a pure virgin. Listen, verse 3. But I am afraid that just as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, your minds will be led astray from the simplicity and purity of devotion to Christ. Now, listen. Here's what he's saying. He's saying, I'm afraid that just how Eve was deceived. Oh, you guys are about to get dropped on right now. Just, just how Eve was deceived by the craftiness of Satan. That word craftiness means complexities. All the, all the, you know, the, the just the, the nagging. I'm like, well, really? Did God really say this? Now, follow me. He said, just by the craftiness, the subtlety. The subtlety of the words of Satan, just how Eve was deceived. I'm afraid that you two in the same way are being led astray from the simplicity and purity of just devotion to Jesus. In other words, it's like this. It's, it, that word simplicity means singleness of mind. It's like Psalm 27, 4. He says, one thing I really seek. That's it. David said, one thing. It's just to know you. To meditate upon your word and to walk and live in your presence all the days of my life. Understand, he's saying the life with Christ is, is really simple. It's just about being purely devoted to him in love. It's just about being loved by him and experiences, experiencing his love and then just loving him back. And in that love relationship, it overflows into all of the fruit. It overflows into all of the blessing. It overflows into all the work of ministry. Everything. All of those things come from a love relationship and an intimate walk with Jesus. You do understand this. Listen to me now. Open up your ears. Listen, you do not bear fruit by doing ministry. I know we have our Christian slang and we say, I, I, you're already offended. Come on, just drop the offense. Just listen, hear me out. You do not bear fruit by doing ministry. You, you don't, you don't. You know why? Jesus in John 15 made it real clear. He said, the only way to bear fruit is to abide in me. But somehow we get confused into thinking, man, I tell you, this mission stream, I tell you, it was a... It was, a, I, I still feel weird saying missions because I was just in Turkey and if you said that word, it was like the F word or something because you couldn't say Christian or missions. So I, I say missions and it still makes my heart sink. Like, anyway, so, so honestly, I mean, like he's saying to you, he's saying just to love Jesus is enough. This is why John 15, if you abide in me, you'll bear fruit. If you don't abide, you won't bear fruit. He did not say, if you will do really good in ministry, you will bear fruit. No, let me tell you what this is. This is a lie to believe that the busier we are, the more fruitful we are. But I'm telling you that the simple life of devotion to Christ is where you get your fruit. Listen, what's happening right now while I'm in the spotlight here is not, I'm not bearing fruit right now. I bear fruit when I'm out there and no one's around but Jesus. I'm bearing fruit when I'm in my closet reading the Word and, and learning about the character of Christ. I'm, I'm, I'm bearing fruit when I'm abiding in the presence of God. You just get to eat from the fruit that I bore yesterday when I was praying. See, so, see, so when, I'm, when I'm preaching and when I do things, when you do things, when you pray for people, man, and I'm not against... Christian lingo. We don't got to throw the baby out with the bathwater. We have to say, well, that was a fruitful time. I might leave tonight and say, wow, that was really fruitful. But let's just be real with ourselves. Fruit is, is, is born not by doing, but by being within. Okay? So the simplicity of just being devoted to Christ is what makes us fruitful and effective in the earth. Because you can teach what you know, but you can only impart who you really are. It's like this. I got my friends here, um, Amy and Kim McNeil. They're down in Chillicothe. 
They are absolute legends to me. I just want to honor them right now. They came up to see me. And listen, honestly, like, they are...